Howard here once again. Yes, it's true. He's back. <laughs> this is a, a new addition to my Acoustic Blues series. I haven't done one for a while. Uh, numbers one, two, and three, the first one, the second one, and the third one are available over at Vimeo. I will put a link to that in the uh, description box below, okay? So let's get started. This is Acoustic Blues number four, and I'm using a drop D tuning this time. So you want to lower your sixth string down one whole step to D, and the rest of the guitar is tuned normally, okay? And uh, the idea behind this one is very similar to the other Acoustic Blues lessons, combining licks and fills and walking bass lines and things into the standard 12 bar blues progression okay so for drop d blues we're going to have a d7 basically an e7 or g7 excuse me which is played like that and then an a7 which is played like that but we'll talk about all that as we get into it okay so here we go uh the very first lick is okay so let me play that one nice and slow with the tab up on the screen and slow it down for you. Okay, now what I'm doing there, there's a slight little sweep. Instead of just hitting the strings, it's just kind of rake your pick across the strings to get that cool kind of raw sound. Let that D string ring right through the lick. And I'm doing that basically with downstrokes just to get that attack, you know, that volume and that attack. Um, what I'm doing is basically just walking down a blues scale, right? And then I grab the major third of what would be a D7 sharp nine or a D7 chord, however you want to look at it, and then... And then we are into a standard boogie pattern, but with drop D, of course, so it's fretted like this. Which is kind of nice, one of the beauties of drop D. Now at the tail end of that, you can see on the tab I play the boogie pattern. Slight little bendy, uh, bluesy bend on the third fret on the top string, and then we play a D7 chord. And you might not know this particular fingering for it, but it's really cool when you have drop D, you can, you can get that high A in there as well, which sounds pretty cool. So we have Nice and slow, one more time. Now what I'm doing there is a downstroke, followed by two more downstrokes, then upstroke, downstroke, and then up, up, down, up, up, down. So we have Right, so after that D7 action, we have that chromatic walking line, or semi-chromatic, however you choose to look at it, but it's octaves all the way. And again, I'm employing that down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. And of course, you can use whatever fingers you want. You can use the first two. You can even bar it. And then we play a boogie pattern on the four chord, which would be G in this case. And so all I'm doing is barring the top two strings, the sixth and the fifth at the fifth fret. And as you can see on the tab, I'm simply playing. And then we have a string of double stops. And those can be quite quick, right? Depending on the tempo that you're playing it at. But if you're laying it back a lot, it sounds pretty good as well. And you can see after those double stops, I went right back to the original boogie pattern on D. So we'll have... What we did there is after playing the boogie pattern, we play that original lick that we used out the shoe with three notes added. 
and that's going to walk us into the V chord, into the A7. So let me do that slow as well. Now when we get to the A7, we're going to play this. So what I'm doing right there, you can play your A7 like that if you want to, but I'm hitting the open A string twice, and then the full chord twice, and then one a piece. So we have passing tone on the 6th fret on the 6th string, and that's going to walk us into the G7 chord. So let's talk about that G7. It's formed a little bit differently because of the drop D tuning. So you can see my ring fingers on the 5th fret on the 6th string, and then I'm barring the first four strings at the 3rd fret, 2nd finger, 4th fret, G string, and Beatles style, doubling that 7th on the 6th fret on the B string, okay? So we have, coming from that A7 again, and then we play the first turnaround. So you can see that on the tab, uh, and once again it's that down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. So now that's the first 12 bars of this 12 bar blues, right? So let me play the whole thing, what we have so far, really at a much slower tempo. That all happens on the one chord again across the uh, D7. And uh, so let's just break that down. Again, I'm hitting the open what is now a D string and letting it ring out. And this is kind of a almost like a rockabilly lick in a way. And you can employ whatever kind of picking you want. I think I use a bit of both, if you will. But probably alternate picking is the best way to go but feel free to do whatever works best for you. So we play the lick once again, slowly. Return to the boogie pattern. There's that bend on the third fret again. Uh, let the D string ring, and now we're using more of the major pentatonic. So from the boogie pattern we have again slowly on that lick and then we walk up with those same octaves but with a different rhythm this time instead of a triplet feel one two three one two three it's a shuffle feel one and two and three and four and so all of that together we have back to that G7 chord shape played with this uh, altered fingering and we play this. So you can see we're moving from the 6th uh, fret to the 5th fret on that B string using the pinky, okay? But we start out without the pinky on the chord, so we're just barring. And let's talk about the picking. It's down, 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 and then it goes into a total up, up, down pattern, okay? And that repeats up, up, down, up, up, down. That's a nice 
nice little cross picking pattern. Comes in handy for a lot of stuff, okay? So from that climb up, and you can see that I did it twice, okay? So we do a uh, classic Jimi Hendrix D7 sharp 9. You can see the chord right there and on the tab. So it's twice on the bass note, just like the A chord previously, and then twice on the chord. And then single notes, do the chord again. Change the single notes so we can make our way to the 5 chord. So that's open 4, 5. So let's put that all together, okay? from the climb up, I think. So you can see we're on an A7 chord now, same shape, but the picking pattern is slightly different, just trying to give it a little more color. We start out walking through the chord the same way, but then we add this. So you can see that on the tab, 8th fret, 7th fret. So you piece those two together and you have... All the while holding that chord down so as many of the notes as possible ring together. Let me play that really slow and of course the tab's there for you to see. And you can pick the individual notes any way you want. You can use just one single stroke, upstroke, downstroke, whatever. But do try to apply the uh, cross picking for the most part. So you can go and then go back to the cross picking or use alternate stroking. best for you. And then we simply move that exact same pattern back to G7. And then we play the closing turnaround, which is pretty easy to see. E flat 9 to D9, or D sharp 9 to D, whichever you prefer. So let's go over that whole second uh, 12 bar section and uh, piece it all together. So there you go with Acoustic Blues number four. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've gotten so many uh, positive uh, comments from you guys on the uh, previous ones. So I felt it was time to get around to doing another one, okay? And once again, uh, Vimeo link down below to the previous three uh, for those of you who haven't checked them out and might want to after seeing this lesson, okay? All the best to everyone always, and I'll see you real soon.